Hey there, guys. Nigaroth here, bringing you on another journey into probably a lesser-known title called the Sword of Ateria. Now, the Sword of Ateria was released for the PS2 in 2005 by a little-known company called Konami. You probably know more for games like Silent Hill or Castlevania. Now, there's a good reason why you probably haven't heard of the Sword of Ateria, and that's for just any number of reasons that we'll be going into later. For right now, though, we are going to go ahead and start a brand new game and see what lies in store for us. So right off the bat, the prologue will dump us into what appears to be fairly generic RPG text bubbles. We get to meet a few characters, a very stern looking woman, a very anime topless man. We do find pretty quickly that the lady's name is Almira. And in a little bit we will find out that the shirtless gentleman here is named Leon. And we're also introduced to a third character pretty promptly named Kane. But what they are discussing currently is that they are on a top-secret mission from the gods to dispose of something that lays in wait in this valley ahead. You can kind of see a very tall pillar of light back there in the background, I guess. That is our end destination. For some reason, though, whatever is waiting down in this valley is attracting Ateria, which we don't currently seem to know what that is. I can only assume that it is of some great importance to Send these three mighty anime warriors out into the fray. Apparently they are part of some elite crack team called Oz, which was the original title of the game in Japan. And that title is going to become a little bit more apparent why it's called that in a little bit. But for right now, it seems that the enemy has made itself apparent. And it is time to get down to brass tacks and find out just what type of game this is. Now, let's go ahead and get started. So, pretty quickly, we all turn into our magic robot forms. I'm not really explaining why we have those, but yes! It is, this is a third-person hack-and-slash type of game. Very much in the vein of Devil May Cry. And you might be wondering just what the hell is going on? What are these things we are fighting? Well, in the prologue here, you don't really have to worry about any of that. It's simply just mashing out combos willy-nilly, and whenever it tells you to press triangle, you press triangle. That's all you have to really worry about. They don't even give you a health meter because there's really no danger of dying in this section. We'll be getting more into real game mechanics in the next video. For right now, this is just a really simple introduction. Get a little bit of backstory going. And while it seems that we are introduced to, to some overwhelming numbers here, that triangle attack that we were doing previously, well, I guess we can do that in tandem with our two fellow partners here. And we can get a little bit more of a spectacular attack going. Here we go! Yeah, we have cleaned up the last of the rabble. We should finally be able to head to whatever that mysterious light is. And all in all, it seems like these members of Oz are 
truly a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, there's some difficult ideas to get across right now, mostly because we don't know what things like Ateria are, but more importantly, some mysterious singing seems to have some negative effects on us. And whatever this singing is, it knocks Almira and Leon out of their ultra-powerful armor. Well, for some reason, Cain is unaffected. And while it seems that Almira and Leon are in a pretty weakened state, I guess that means that the only person that can really continue on safely is their leader, Cain. For some reason, the Etheria seems to be acting completely on its own, as if it has some sentience. But the real question is, why is Cain still alright? But we're not going to be getting the answer to that just now. Instead, Cain is going to head off ahead. I'm just going to take care of what's laying further down in wait in the valley. carry out the will of the gods. great descent, the winged folk were summoned to become holy envoys. These envoys carried the gods' will to every corner of the world. Gods, 
ever desiring more power and greatness, began to gather up the special light found at the source of all things. Thousands upon thousands of nights later, the world, under the divine providence of the gods, lingered in a state of tranquility, oblivious of what was to come.